Hey guys, Andy here from Sweet Edition. So I want to talk a bit about uh, the foundation system for these garden suites and detached accessory dwelling units. Now there's many different options for foundations and what we're doing, because this is our first project, we really want to go through the entire process of construction using traditional methods. And then we're going to ex be exploring other options as well. So in this situation, what we've done was we've poured in a a proper foundation. It is a slab on grade, so there's no basement. However, we had a, a foundation wall that goes below the frost line, which is below four feet, to ensure that there's not going to be any frost issues on here. Uh, and we had a, a proper slab that was poured on top of the grade with insulation underneath. So when it comes to foundation options, there's uh, the possibility to, if the, uh, if the unit is small enough, you can just do a perimeter slab without the actual foundation going all the way below frost line. Um, that's obviously not as ideal. We see a lot of that in uh, accessory structures such as garages. Uh, there's also the ability to do a, a pier type foundation, right? So uh, you pour a, uh, excuse me, you dig up a, um, uh, a footing four feet deep and pour in the concrete and then connect it kind of like a post and beam system. And then the floor is not going to be a concrete slab, but it's, rather it's going to be a, uh, a wooden framed floor and then you would insulate that and kind of build on top on top of that now that's possible and it is according to the code however you know it's not as durable as say something like this where we have a proper foundation wall as well as the uh, the, the concrete slab there's other options these days such as screw down foundations and the benefit of things like a screw down foundation is that you can kind of do that you know year round uh, you can do that you know in the dead of winter when the ground is frozen uh, whereas when you're excavating, even though it is possible in the winter, it's just a lot more work. One of the other considerations when you are doing a uh, uh, excavation for something like this is that there's going to be a lot of uh, earth that you're going to excavate and you need to ensure that you have space to put that somewhere or it has to be hauled away. And some of that earth is going to come back in when you do the backfilling. Okay, so that's a very important consideration and something that, uh, you know, we had to kind of deal with, especially when you're building a garden suite in a backyard with a smaller site. Sometimes it might make sense if you're going to be excavating anyways, can you do a basement, right? So depending on the municipality that you're, that you're working with, uh, sometimes the basement is allowed. Sometimes it gets taken into consideration in terms of the overall square footage that's allowed. And sometimes it doesn't. And these are very specific municipal bylaws that you need, to, you need to clarify, okay? So those are some of the options at a very high level. Now, one thing I do wanna point out also is that, you know, we hear a lot about uh, prefab construction and uh, uh, factory built homes. And I really believe that that is going to be the future and that's going to be a great option. However, that's really only one side of it, right? That's probably 50% of the construction. We still need to ensure we have a proper foundation, utility connections and all of that before the house can be put on top of it, okay? So you pretty much still need conventional construction methods for the foundation, and then perhaps more innovative ways such as prefab or uh, you know a hybrid solution such as uh, prefab panels that you can install. Sometimes these things can be craned in, uh, you know, sometimes they can be carried in in pieces. Uh, but just understand that when it comes to the foundation, we're pretty much gonna be stuck with conventional methods for uh, the foreseeable future, okay? Thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to learn more about investing in housing densification and how you can get involved, hit that subscribe button. I put together a beginner's guide and also a handy eight point checklist that covers everything you need to know about adding a legal second suite. We cover important bylaw and building code requirements for cities in Ontario and all the design considerations you need to make to successfully complete your project. You can download that through the link in the description below. Until next time, to your success.